Hi everyone, today I'm going to take a short lesson on Lenz's Law and also help you answer a couple of questions relating to this. Now, Lenz's Law has to do with the prediction of the direction of the electric current when there is an induced voltage. Now, first of all, in order to get an induced voltage, you need a magnet and you need a coil of wire. So, suppose you have a coil of wire but the circuit is not complete and you bring a magnet oh, there's not a good diagram let's make it like this so the circuit is not complete right and you bring a magnet into towards this coil of wire what the magnet has is what we call lines of flux and as you bring the magnet close to the coil of wire what happens is these lines of flux link or cut the turns of the coil but nothing happens here because the circuit is not complete so there might be an induced voltage but no current so in order for the current to flow you actually need a complete loop or a coil of wire so you need a coil of wire okay and when the magnet moves towards the coil of wire so you have the lines of flux that link the coils of wire and you need what we call a changing flux if you hold the magnet still nothing happens but when there's a changing flux there's going to be an induced voltage and if the circuit is complete there's going to be a current now the thing is you're changing kinetic energy movement of the magnet into electrical energy now some of this energy is going to be lost in the form of heat um, due to the resistive forces in the wire but the rest of it is going to be converted to electrical energy now in order to convert energy from one form to the other work has to be done and work involves a force so the magnet is actually going to move slowly you're going to feel a force opposing the magnet entering the coil now the opposing force is actually produced by the magnetic field of the current that's induced so we're talking about two magnetic fields here. So the magnet itself, the one that you're bringing towards the coil, has its, own, has its field. And then because there's a voltage induced and because the circuit is complete, there's going to be a current. Now, whenever there's a current flowing in a coil, the current has its own magnetic field. So now there are two fields occupying the same position at the same time. So there's going to be an opposing force. They don't like change. Okay, so it's resistance to change. So the current is going to act in such a way as to prevent the North Pole from entering the coil. And so, so the so the current is going to produce its magnetic field such that there is a north pole at this end of the magnet. So on the outside, there's going to be a north pole because north repels north. So if you hold your, use your right hand grip rule with north pointing up, then you can predict the direction of the current. You're going to get a current going that way when the magnet is entering. When the magnet is leaving, again, you're going to get an opposing force because the current is going to act in such a way that the magnetic field that the current produces is going to prevent the magnet from leaving this coil of wire. And so it's going to induce a south pole. And if it induces a south pole here, the current is going to flow the other way so that is why you notice when a magnet enters the coil you have the current flowing one way and when the magnet leaves the coil you have the current flowing the other way if the magnet is stationary that's where the field is strongest inside the coil nothing happens because the magnetic field or the lines of flux are not changing so the key word is you need changing flux in the presence of a conductor so that's what Lenz's law is now in your books instead of the coil drawn like this lots of lots of coils of wire is a solenoid 
Okay, so if you have a solenoid, it's not connected to a battery, but the ends of the solenoid are connected to make it a complete loop. And if you have, let's say, a south pole that is entering this coil, so there's an increasing magnetic field. Now, what you're going to do is the current is going to act in such a way that the magnetic field that is created due to the result of the current in the coil is going to oppose the south pole entering. So it's going to induce a south pole here. So there's going to be a south pole at this end and a north pole. And now if you use your right hand grip rule, my thumb pointing that way, my fingers are curving upwards. So the current is going to go that way. So that's how you predict the direction of the current. Okay, so that's how you do those two questions from your booklet. So your booklet, the electromagnetic, you don't have the booklet, but you do have the questions. And the questions are these ones. There are a couple of them on. They're just two questions. Now, there's also another thing that is related to Lenz's law. And this is... Um, an experiment that is done, and the explanation is all due to Lenz's law. There are many forms of this experiment. So suppose you have, let's say there's a hollow tube. Okay, there are two of them. Let's say this is a plastic tube. And let's say this is a metal tube. So the metal could be copper, or it could be aluminium, anything, okay? Now, if you take, now there are all sorts of magnets. There's a um, material called neodymium and neodymium magnets are very, very strong. So if you take a neodymium magnet, we do have this in school and I'll show you when we are back or if I get a chance to go and do a demo and video myself, I'll do that. But a neodymium magnet, so north, south, if it's dropped through the plastic tube, it'll just fall normally because of the force of gravity. It's going to accelerate down and it just takes the usual time. But if the same magnet is made to fall through the copper or aluminium, what's going to happen is it's going to take a long time to reach the bottom. I put a little video showing you that. And let's say this is the north and that's the south. So the the progress is very, very slow through the metal, whereas through the plastic, it just comes straight down. And you wonder why. The, all this can be explained due to Lenz's law. Now, the thing is, neither copper nor aluminium are magnetic, but they're both conductors. And this circular tube almost acts like a solenoid. So when the North Pole is, so the magnet is falling down, okay? So this part of the bottom part of this is almost like a solenoid. It's like entering the solenoid. So this part of the coil will induce a north pole there. And so if you hold, there's going to be a current going this way, trying to prevent the solenoid from, uh, prevent the magnet from entering this. And at the other end, it's almost like it's leaving that part of the solenoid, there's a south pole there. So th this one is going to have a north pole at that end trying to bring this magnet up. So that's a north pole there. And so you've got the current going the other way. So you've got current going one way over here and then the other way there. So what's happening is it actually probably ends up going at constant speed. It's not accelerating. It's reached terminal velocity probably. So the force is pulling it up and gravity force is pulling it down and it just goes slowly. And that's how you explain it using Lenz's law. So I hope that made sense. Bye for now.